Hey guys, I'm Wendy Fan. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to welcome you to an early June. It is kind of a an overcast day, so I thought I would take the opportunity to have good lighting out here to film to show you guys what's been growing on this garden. I have been doing so much work in moving things around, changing things up, and I'll show you guys what I've been doing. So first off, I cut more of this section in the front corner to get more sun loving plants in. In the patio space there's mainly part shade and full shade and then even though the part that gets full sun still gets a little bit of a shade in the high noon so basically there is no completely full sun area except for this tiny space out here in this corner. So I've decided this is where I would put the, the sweet potatoes. I dug up a little more space here to get the full, you know, like sun loving, full sun kind of a plant. And the shorter ones in the front, of course, like the sweet potatoes, and they're just going to trail along these uh, bamboo arches. And got some flowers for pollinators, and then I got the sun chokes growing in the, this is like the more dwarf variety, so hopefully it wouldn't grow more than five feet. So they're out here in the front corner here and the back side so it wouldn't shade off the sweet potatoes. And because this is kind of like a front corner where it gets close to the walkway, I do not want it to, you know, block traffic. So I'm going to take them up this, this uh, trellis, this arch, and then hopefully if need to, I would just let them kind of spill over to the lawn here. So yeah, let's see how, how well these will do out here in the full sun corner. I got a roselle behind the, the, the sun choke and then ginger. I'm gonna try out ginger in the full sun because I've been mentioning in multiple videos that, you know, I, my ginger are decent, but they're not like crazy amount of food because they don't get enough sun. So let's just try out in this corner and I'll keep you guys updated on that. All right, let's take you to that little section just across right here. Right over here, we got the beautiful dahlias. I planted these from last year and actually the year before that, the tubers. And dahlia tubers and dahlia flowers are actually edible. The flowers has a little bit of a bitterness, but they are really beautiful garnished on the plate especially these beautiful colors when you know that dahlias are edible. There's so many different kinds of colors in dahlia flowers. That means there's so many different kinds of antioxidants. I'm super excited about these flowers. Maybe just pick one for a dish or something. It's just definitely a wow statement. Also the tubers has a little bit of like a, I'm not exactly sure if you can eat it raw, but I have seen a couple of videos on YouTube where people actually try to like cook it instead of taste kind of like potatoes. I tried like a couple of bites raw and it kind of tasted like a bland jicama. It, it's kind of like a survival food I would say because I can grow so many different types of tubers that are delicious and these the flowers are just so beautiful. I would much rather grow them for the flowers for the pollinators for me to enjoy. So this giant pot I have been meaning to put a banana up here. This banana was given by my friend's dad and um, it's been here for almost two years. I did not know where it could go. Uh, I want it to be out here, but I'm just concerned in being in this neighborhood if I'll just cross my fingers when there is bananas here. So the sun chucks were growing out in this, um, in this spot last year, but didn't get as great of a harvest as I thought because there's not that much sun. This part kind of starts shading off by noon time so it doesn't get that much heat uh, in this area but hopefully with this banana as it grows taller it's gonna be able to capture more sun this way. So let's head back this way as we move towards the uh, patio space. So the weather has still have overall warmed up and I'm really loving this weather, don't get me wrong, even though it hasn't been that hot, I'm still enjoying the comfort of the Southern California climate. So the Baja here, this is, uh, it looks a lot like the elephant, elephant, elephant ear. <laughs> 
except that bà kha is edible. I don't know the English name for this, but Vietnamese use this a lot in their cooking in like a, the spicy sour fish kind of a, a soup. But you can definitely make it vegetarian or however you like. It has a really interesting uh, crunchy spongy texture. So I'll be sure to make a video to show you guys how we can use this plant. So just so you know, I've shown in the last video, I believe in the, the garden tour that this was not grown out as much. So I'm really happy to see that they're growing and then even some baby ones are popping up from the the soil. Things that are, you know, part of like the taro kind of a family, they can be poisonous. So you got to be sure to plant the right variety. So in front of that, we got some uh, potatoes, got the blue potatoes and even some red ones. I mainly like the blue ones, but if they're red skinned or different types of potatoes, if they're sprouting, I might as well just throw them in the ground and see what happens. There's not that much sun here, so hopefully I'll get some potatoes. They're just kind of nice and it kind of cascades a little bit over. So I like that kind of spilling effect in the foreground. And then here to my right, this plant is native to parts of Mexico. And I'll leave the name right here for you guys. So traditionally they use this for their blood sugar. So you can dry the leaves to make tea out of it. And what's really cool is that when you boil the leaves, the tea would turn to this like purple, reddish purple color. So. Uh, they actually use that to do like a natural coloring, like a dye for fabric as well. So I can't wait because so, I do need to kind of prune this back a little bit. So maybe I can use some of that, some of these for tea and um, to try out coloring, like dyeing one of my t-shirts or something. Remember that episode where I was showing you guys how I propped up that tree collared behind this one? So the one growing behind this one is another variety of uh, tree collars, but it grows a lot bigger leaves so that one I really like having the big leaves to juice with and then the one in front is a special variety that came out of my friend's property which I've been sharing uh, I made this one available to you guys on my website these are I call it like the ruffled purple tree collards because of the beautiful well you can see the purple leaves here and it has a really beautiful patterns on them chickens about to have some tree collard ah. Yeah, they're the ones that will be shy. So I like eating with this one more because it doesn't have as much of that chewy, fibrous kind of, um, yeah, a chew. So it's easier to eat with. And then the, the common variety, I like juicing with them. So you can see that this plant really has gotten a lot bigger, a lot more branches has grown ever since I've propped that tree and that tree, the other uh, tree collared up, giving them more space to grow. And you know, the taller a plant gets, the easier, the faster it is for them to continue to grow because they're getting a lot more sun. So let's head on to the patio space and show you guys what I have been doing uh, in that space. <laughs> This is the rose apple tree that I've grown from seed. If you guys have seen my past episode of the garden tour, they were just kind of popping out with buds. And then last month in May, they were blooming. And so now I'm really crossing my fingers. Hopefully a lot of the fruits will take because these fruits are so lovely. They have the smell of a rose and sweetness of a fruit and that crunchy texture. So. Who does not love the smell of a rose, right? Right across from the rose apple, we got the cabbage tree. Now, you guys, many of you were interested when I show you guys in a few, you know, the past garden tours of this cabbage. I mean, look how beautiful this is. We love the look of cabbages, right? Uh, what makes this one really special is that it grows on like a tree form. It grows upwards with different uh, branches and each branch would have this massive well, it's not like your giant ca traditional cabbage, but it would grow this cabbage shaped flower. And then when you cut this top, the, the top one off, it would encourage these side growths with a bunch of like little cabbages. Um, and then eventually this one, as it grows, it would develop into this firm cabbage like. And I was fortunate enough to uh, pick a couple from my friend's place when I was visiting. These are the tree cabbages. Mine are still small, but this one has grown to a nice size. You can see it's 
got like a good personal size cabbage. So I'm just going to see if I can break this off. Maybe. Thank you, beautiful. Oh gosh. Wow. So after you cut this off, you'll get a bunch of side shoots that starts to come out from the stem. There it is, a baby, a mini cabbage. So beautiful. This one is about to form. You can see the baby, the center kind of tightening up. Some of you guys were interested in growing this as well. So he started propagating these. So now they are available on my website. If you guys want to check it out, I'll leave a link down below for you. So these ones were picked from his garden. It had a lot of more bigger leaves on the, the, on the sides. Kind of looks like this one, but this is like the center part where eventually it would, uh, kind of firm up and have this little cabbage and that looks more like a size of an endive I would say so it's super cool and this one's turning a little yellow on top here actually there's the fridge has been having some issues so um, yeah anyway got to take care of that but because of that I believe is why it's um, you know the vegetables are not staying as fresh as fresh in the fridge so I better cut this open to show you guys before this goes bad. I really want to uh, try this out and see how it tastes. Mm. I'm going to try to plant this. Definitely tastes like a cabbage to me. <laughs> mm. It does not have a strong of that classic cabbage flavor though. It doesn't have that sort of a strong taste. Mm. This is so cool. <laughs> oh, and then this plant right next to me right here. Mm is the hyssop. Mm. Now there's so many different types of hyssops out there that are, you know, they're good for coughs. So you usually see this in, uh, you know, like cough drops sort of um, uh, remedies. And this is my favorite smell out of all kinds of hyssops because I am a sucker for like minty smells and licorice smells and root beer kind of a smell. And this one do remind me of that. And the hummingbirds love these flowers mm. oh my god it's a little sweet from the nectar well of course that's why the hummingbirds love it and then I really like mm, these leaves are so good in the salad or in beverages it, it's actually pretty minty oh my gosh goodness goodness oh <laughs> I was really happy that this was like a good spot for being right next to the acerilla because I got the African blue basil and this one to make sure that I attract the pollinators so that they would pollinate uh, my acerilla cherries so that they can fruit for me. So it is blooming now. It is, it is loaded with flowers and I really, I'm looking so forward to getting the fruits off this super high vitamin C cherry that is so delicious when you grow them yourself because peak picking up at the peak of brightness as we speak look at the bees look at the bees <laughs> as I was speaking about the bee visiting you know who else has been visiting hey buddy it's all right there's a wild snake at first it appeared on in the garage and I thought do they like are they attracted to like fertilizer because that's what I have a lot of you know in the garage buddy Ooh, go out the garden go to the garden hey go to the garden um, anyway so it just kind of suddenly appeared in there and my first thought was is this someone's pet does someone lose their pet so I ended up calling the animal control and 
they well what I learned is that they would only come out uh, to get it if if it is something they feel like that would put you in harm so they were asking me to identify the snake and said oh that's a California a king snake they're good guys he said and that immediately kind of excited me I I mean when I first saw it I was a little nervous uh, but I kind of felt like his nice energy, you know, and that he's kind of shy because he kind of want to move away once he saw that I noticed him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they, they eat rodents, so uh, I've been missing some things in the garden, so I thought, hey, they're pretty easy to care for, right? I mean, especially like a wild one, he kind of takes care of himself, so I kind of thought it would be kind of cool if he would stay. And so the next day, I actually saw him again, so he's actually still can be in the garden so um anyway he's a good size one he was like about four feet i think so i think he's like a full grown hopefully he'll be like my uh garden guardian <laughs> so back to the acerilla it's pushing a lot more height this year it's a pretty fast growing tree and then right next to it is the moringa moringa is growing back now that the season is warm this is the very recent project that I did. I just put this pot together. There was a Chinese chrysanthemum growing in the ground here. It was growing quite well until I started growing the loofah, uh, you know, the vines here and and some other things all around. And uh, the tree collar being right behind this fence, growing so tall, it has shaded out this area by the time it gets to the the Chinese chrysanthemum plant it's there's not that much light and so I thought it needed to be elevated to get more light and so I've put this uh, pot in here and what I really thought of creating good drainage in this pot is that like a third of this pot on the bottom has perlite for really good drainage because I have the curry tree growing here the curry tree, people say, it grows well in full sun, but in Southern California, it seems like the sun has been too intense, maybe too intense for a young plant. I mean, this is just like a foot high, and it's starting to flower and produce these little berries. The berries carry the seeds that you can grow out of, but the berries are actually edible too. So in order to get this to focus more on the leaves, I should cut off the top right now, but I want to try the I want to eat the fruits again. It was pretty interesting. Now, it's not going to give like giant fruit, so it should not take up a full sun kind of an area. And then with the cone flowers here, because they also don't like it being too wet, so I kind of just uh, grouped everything together here, and the the Chinese chrysanthemum, um, it'll regrow. It's really hardy. I basically kind of chopped it up, chopped it up, you know, I pruned it back down. So I'll just get some new shoots growing and then it'll kind of spill over a little bit so it'll be really beautiful. And I picked this up at Home Depot. Sun, uh, sun Gold Cherry Tomatoes is by far my favorite so far because I really love that fruity, sweet tomato flavor from that variety. Um, from that variety. And the one I picked up at Home Depot is called Sun Sugar. I read online that this is pretty close to a sun gold. I'm supposed to not crack as easily, so it seems like it's like sun gold, except it could be better. And I just want to get a jump start anyway, so I got a plant to start. Thinking it would be good to just plant this on the back side here to let it climb up. There's a trellis here anyway, right? That's a, the Scarlet Runner bean growing, like one plant there to kind of give it a nice pop of color on the trellis. And then the yams went in really well. And the loofah here got four plants. And it hasn't been that hot here. Usually it's the heat, definitely the sun, the brightness, but and the heat that really pushes the growth of the loofah. So they'll come on in, you know, um, a little slower this year because we have not been getting very long or consistent warm weather. Today we're just in like low 60s right now and it's um, early June. And then across from here, I've actually been growing the uh, dragon tooth beans for my friend's dad. I, I really love those beans. They are pretty um, stringless, kind of like reminds me of dragon tongue beans. These ones, what I've been noticing is that it it's picking up some purple pigment. So it reminds me of the dragon dragon tongue beans which grows in a bush form in my space I think 
beans are better off being like a vine so that they can grow tall reaching the sun for me. We'll pick some more over there in the other uh, section of beans. By the way, these are some really beautiful variegated comfrey. They do really well in uh, part shade and even mainly shade out here in Southern California. So I got some go-to cola growing here and the pandan. They all kind of like a little bit of shade and a lot of moisture. So I thought this is kind of a, a perfect environment for them under these um, ashitaba. Now, right next to the go-to cola, I actually got the sweet potato slip starting right here. It's actually in the raised bed under the ashitaba as well. And uh, look at this. If you don't have room to grow sweet potatoes for the tubers, you can still grow them in part shade. It can even take quite a lot of shade because the vine would just kind of trail and it'll search for light. If not, you can keep cutting it back to eat the greens. You can grow them just for the greens. You can check out my other video, which I've shown you guys one of the recipes of um, making these uh, sweet potato leaves really delicious. <laughs> I basically threw down a couple of the purple sweet potatoes that I harvest uh, in the soil and buried it and that would just, you know, encourage a bunch of growth that came up. One of an example, this one actually continued to grow uh, out of the sweet potato that's just growing. Uh, I didn't even bury it fully. It's mostly, you know, above the earth and uh, because they're the rodent issue, they kept eating eventually. I think they stopped now eating the tuber. And then behind I got the super sweet 100 cherry tomato growing here. I figure that being in this space it can you know climb up taller and then eventually helping to shade the ashitaba because the ashitaba likes a little more shade otherwise it'll get burned. And I really like keeping these leaves deep dark green because I just think they're so beautiful that way. So hopefully, yeah, the, the, the plan is for the cherry tomatoes to sh give them shade and to produce more sweet cherries or uh, cherry tomatoes because they're going to get more sun as they grow up. This is a variety that's supposed to take heat really well. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I rarely direct sow seeds in this garden because there's not enough light or space for that. But in this, there is a little area area here. So I sow down some of uh, the green variety of the Egyptian spinach because they do really well in part shade actually. And so I just direct uh, sow these like a week or a week and a half ago. And they come up really quickly, especially being in this warmer weather. I just kind of like sprinkled it on top and and um, just kind of moved around the soil with my bare hands. They don't really need to be covered with thick soil, so I just kind of like basically just broadcast the seeds in and then that was it. I got two different varieties of sunchokes growing here. I'm gonna test out to see how you know they both like being in more sun a sunny spot here. The I noticed that the white ones, like the clear water variety or the dwarf one, which has a more white skin to it, they seem to produce better in the shade, like they can take the shade a little better than the red one as far as I've seen. Um, yeah, so I still got a little bit more left of these on the website if you guys are interested. They definitely are sprouting now, so definitely need to be in the ground soon. Right here, got more sun chokes. I do have a bitter gourd, you know, growing here and the melon. This is that French variety of melon growing. I've never had those, but I read really good reviews on it. So I'm really excited about them. Now we are in this part shade area. It gets some afternoon sun here. And I really, this is definitely one of the most exciting plants in the garden right now because, uh, hello, I mean, look at this. This is only growing in a five pot grow pot, you guys, five gallon grow pot. I overwintered this under the grow light and um, it's been doing really well. Like it was stretching a little bit, you know, to get to the light, but it did, it did flower it a few times and it produced like two or three, I think three fruits in the garage over the winter. And so now I still get like propagations going 
under that grow light as this plant is out here enjoying the sun. You can see just being in a five gallon pot definitely is growing. It's stunning. I mean, look at this, just one branch here. I can count. There's probably like 20, 20 plus uh, fruits dangling on this. This is a ground cherry, also known as the Cape gooseberries. The unique thing about this is that it has like the vitamin B complex. It kind of has a little bit of a tomato, but more like a pineapple acidic a kind of a flavor. So it has a little bit of that tropical flavor, cross between fruit and tomato, vegetable-like, but more towards the fruity side. I really love them. They are pretty addicting. But the thing is, you got to be patient with this plant. You got to wait for them to basically drop off as the the husk would, you know, start off being green and fuzzy and then the husk would lose the fuzziness and it'll dry up. And then the stem would also dry up and that's when it would drop to the ground. When you open it, usually when it drops to the ground, it would be ready to eat. But you should check them because it has a really weird sensation to the mouth or astringent. Um, it's, it's just not a pleasant experience if it's not fully ripe. So make sure when you open it, you do see that it is like a golden yellow color, kind of like a yellow cherry tomato color. That is the perfect time to eat them. This. Oh, another thing I want to point out is you don't have to freak out every single time when like, like the, when there's like a branch or a particular area on the plant dying basically because like this one here I believe the one that's browning is actually one of the very old like original uh, stems so it's dying back but you're seeing there's plenty of growth the other ones are still really green so they're taking up nutrients but this one here all of a sudden I I first was concerned thinking oh what happened to this one you know it's it, it's starting to die off and I thought oh there's one that just dropped So this one just dropped. There's some bigger ones here. This one just dropped, but I'm peeking through the hole. It's not totally yellow yet. Oh, it's not a bad color because this one is not getting as much nutrients from the, the branch that's like drying out. Um, so you actually want it to be the more yellow, the better. This one is okay. Oh, and then once in a while you'll get like a bug that bit into the hole and then it'll get to the cherry. So, gotta watch out for that. Anyway, we'll just try this one out. There it is. Mm. It's pretty good. I think it'll taste even better in a couple of days, but as long as you see it's mostly yellow, you're able to eat them. So, thank you plant! <laughs> Definitely made my day. So I got the yukons, two of the yukons growing right next to uh, the ground cherry. It's got some nice big leaves that you can actually uh, harvest for tea. So I've potted up this pepper floor also I believe is known as like the Napolese uh, peppers. This is like a sweet and spicy pepper. It has like a fruity uh, fragrance. A little bit of that hint of fruitiness to it. So I really enjoy this pepper. One of my all-time favorites really. And this one actually was uh, last year's uh, a tree. A tree. <laughs> last year's plant. I gave it a bigger pot. This is a 10 gallon pot. This is the purple uh, plantain, uh, broadleaf plantain that has really nutritious um, deep purple pigment to it. Uh, yeah, I make tea with it or I would add some to my juices, things like that. So I was thinking maybe I would put these in between to kind of like make a nice uh, symmetrical uh, centerpiece, not centerpiece, but um, a display <laughs> in this pot. And then next to it, we've got the strawberry tower. So something's been eating my fruit, so I started putting these 
these baggies over it. It's been very useful. Now you know that it is a strawberry that's ready to eat because there's no more white color on the strawberries. And it, even the stem broke off so easily. Oh my god. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, it's so good. And the inside even has more red. It tastes like a smoothie. Oh. Oh. It. That aftertaste is amazing. If you're not growing your own, the next best strawberries you can get would be at your local farmer's market. Look at that. It's not even, um, there's no white inside. Mmm. 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 Thank you. All right, now we're under the canopy. It feels really good to be here. It's like this little, somewhat of an enclosed space. Got the grass jelly here, which I think I will be moving it somewhere else, because. Uh, a lot of things that don't produce fruits can take a lot more shade than you think so since I'm growing for the leaves uh, I'm gonna move this to a little more shaded spot the soursop tree has grown back usually this the leaves would drop in the winter and then as it starts warming up it would um, regrow the the new leaves so I interplanted this with some uh, a couple of beans here this is that stringless green bean also known as dragon tooth bean that I've shown you guys earlier. Production kind of slowed down because I, it's most likely that I, it's been concentrating on on getting the the beans to develop. So I really should start picking out these beans and then give it some fertilizing, uh, to kind of give it a boost to continue to, uh, produce. So what happened here was that there was some sort of creature that was eating the beans and that's why I covered the beans up. So that worked. The next morning I woke up, I was checking, you know, the beans were still intact. However, they chewed off the stem. That's why there's like um, parts of the, the beans on the top were like drying out. They also ate part of the leaves and one of the cucumber that was like seven or eight inches it's a really plump Japanese cucumber uh, the entire plant has died back but the cucumber was still really like fresh looking it looked a bit more mature like more yellow but it didn't look any different than a mature yellow cucumber on a, a living plant so I wanted to see how long it can hold out for it was like there for almost a year eight seven eight inches gone so excited to be harvesting these Baha. They're pretty expensive at the grocery store and they give you just a little bunch too. So happy about the harvest today. I got some red amaranth, Baha, uh, Hessa, pepper, mint. I really love these in uh, teas and uh, summer beverages. The tomato was a volunteer from the winter time. A little bit of mulberries left in the garden right now on the tree and um, the tree cabbage. I really hope that next time I'll be picking one from my own garden. So thank you guys for joining me out here today to see what's been growing the past month. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe to this channel and hit that bell button right next to the uh, subscribe button so you'll be notified when a new video is out. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram uh, where I do some instant updates. And uh, if you would like to support my work, I really would appreciate it. You can go check out my website. So I'll, ch I'll leave the links of everything that I've mentioned just below this video. Thank you guys. See you right back here very soon. Happy gardening! Bye!